I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike, and I'm currently in New Zealand on a Harley Davidson with Tour One. So Tour One is run by Gary France, and this is actually my fourth trip with them. Now, last year I rode in over 22 countries, and I've probably been on 15 plus organized tours over the last few years. And Tour One is like the creme de la creme for me. There's something about the way that Gary runs these trips, organizes them and brings people that are like-minded together for an adventure on Harley Davidson's that I just can't get enough of. Everything from the hotels, the food, I've got my priorities right, all the way through to finding the absolutely best riding roads you can in whatever country, countries it is that you're going through. Gary seems to have just found the way to optimize your time off and get the most amazing adventure on two wheels. Food, scenery, the hidden spots you don't know about, the best roads, like-minded people, great motorcycles, and he's, don't tell him, but a really nice guy as well. So that all adds to the overall package as to why I'm on my fourth trip with Tour One. He does trips all around Europe. I'm actually in New Zealand right now, so it's not just limited to Europe. And he's got a pretty good website, so you can check out all the tours that he's doing. And if you ever have any questions, you can, of course, message me on my social media. I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike, and I'm going to carry on touring in New Zealand. <laughs>
fueling. I I can't believe how many different types of scenery we've gone through today from super flat valley beds with jagged uphill mountains to rivers and bridges and sweepy windy stuff, trees, grasses, cows, New Zealand lamb, which I had last night and was absolutely delicious. It's absolutely incredible like diversity. Sunshine has been beautiful all day. So I'm trying to eat some nuts while we're uh, stopped as well. Yeah, we're fueling up. We've got an army of 12 bikes. I'm actually sort of working this trip as well because I'm a sweep for Gary on tour one, which means I'm back marker and kind of responsible for making sure all of the ducklings, including me, I'm back duckling, uh, are not getting lost. Beautiful so far in New Zealand. Now through this video, I'm going to share some of the highlights of things to see in New Zealand, some of the stuff that you're going to expect to see in New Zealand, a little bit about what I think about the road glide, the bike that I'm riding as well. I'm not going to tell you anything right now because I'm only a day in and you know what I'm like, I always want to make sure I've actually had some seat time, bum on the seat before I start saying if I like or dislike something, you've got to be, you've got to be able to have a fair review. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think, if you've got any questions, any ideas, feedback for future videos as well. And uh, hit that bell so you get notifications and you don't miss future videos. You can tell I'm feeling a little bit tired today. Um, I'm going to get knowing that tonight so I've got a little bit more energy for tomorrow. Ugh, the sun. Taking a moment. This view is exactly why I do trips with Tour One. This is the fourth trip I've done with them, with Gary. And I don't think I'd ever have the time, the research to find the hidden gems like this. This is the Tasman Sea. This is an ocean I've never been to. This is the window where I'm gonna sleep. This is where I'm gonna sleep. And that is the view of my Harley Davidson is parked outside. Okay, so tours always have effectively like a wooden spoon dick of the day, magic fluffy unicorn, and they're about to be awarded. Uh, so <laughs> the group is assembled, we've just had dinner. We're gonna hear the nominations. We've just run past the lookout that we came to yesterday. It just shows you how different the weather can make the situation. It's still unbelievably beautiful. Sorry if it's a bit windy, but very different to see. When I got my new beanie in uh, New Zealand the other day, I got a bit of banter from my friends for the fact that it's like 28 degrees in New Zealand and who needs a beaner? Uh, who's laughing now? We're all cold, snuggled up in a coffee shop. <laughs> and I got a beanie on. <laughs> Uh, okay, that right there is a tree, Carolines. 
fully crossing the road. Um, basically, there's pretty limited road systems in New Zealand and there's no way around. So we're going to have to wait for the electricity company to come, then the tree company. <sighs> At least it's not raining. Uh, we've, got, we've got a guy in a ditch here uh, off the road. I've just stopped to make sure he's all right. The group has gone ahead. Uh, I can't help him, so I'm going to go try and see if I can get someone to help him. I'm not really sure how we managed it, but this weather is insane. Hopefully you can hear us over the amount of people in the coffee shop. We're now back at the coffee shop we stopped at before. We've got a cup of tea to try and warm up and we are getting as much hot food as they can turn out based on the fact that they were about to close. Uh, but there's suddenly all the traffic that can't get down the road rocking up here. So our accommodation is only 55 kilometers from where we are now, but we can't get through and they're not going to be clearing it anytime soon. The flooding was increasing. It was getting deeper and deeper. My cut bike actually cut out three times like out out so we've just managed to find a hotel maybe an hour that way where we can hopefully get some sleep i've now got not enough hands to talk to you and eat my pie um but we managed to get hopefully enough rooms for 17 to sleep and hopefully hot showers and then we next we'll figure out where we can eat food but it's all part of the adventure you don't travel to have smooth sailing no adventuring <laughs> This is stories happen. Okay, um, hopefully this camera mic's gonna work. We've made it to a hotel and they have five rooms for 17 of us, from my understanding. The road the way we were going is now closed and the road going back to where we came from is now blocked as well. Trees, landslides. I've never seen so much rain coming down. So thankfully we've got a place to stay. We're going to work out which room's going to be sharing with who because it's going to be tight. But you don't get stories about adventures, right? <laughs> You might not believe it, but that is sunshine on my face. I'm not sure what's going on with the weather in New Zealand, but the massive storm front thing that's come through and dumped six inches plus on us seems to have passed. We are actually stranded on the west north coast of New Zealand right now. The road south is closed, seven landslides, trees, power lines down crossing it. There are actually people out there stuck between the sand, like the... Uh, there are actually people out there stuck between the landslides, so actually we're pretty lucky to have made it back. But going back north again, it is also closed, so there's a whole load of people that are just like piled into this hotel. There's small towns around here, so there's not many options to stay. We've been super lucky. The 17 of us on the trip with Tour 1 have managed to, between us, get seven rooms, and we're sharing like a couple and a singleton, so I'm in with a, with a couple and yeah make it work they've managed to pull enough food out of freezers to feed us and the coaches of people that have been driving through and can't get anywhere yeah it's one of those moments where you realize like quite how awesome society human civilization can be that when you know there's times where you need to adapt and shift and find ways to accommodate people they do and tour one have been amazing i'm obviously back marker on this trip so emma and gary and i have sat down and worked out a plan so we've got a plan for the next few days. We can't carry on south. It's going to be closed for another two days, they reckon, the police roughly. Oh, the sun's coming out. Ah, it's beautiful. Um, so we're going to go back north, back across the Southern Alps, then down and make our way to Queenstown, which is where we were going to have a rest day in two days. And I was going to go paragliding, but I've had to cancel that. And then we'll pick back up with the original plan of the rest of the route, which is just epic. So we've got a couple of jiggle around, but you do what you gotta do on an adventure, right? It's mad surreal right now. The road north to south on the west coast of New Zealand is closed. You can just walk down the middle of the road. When in the world is the world this quiet?
the night before. The rain has stopped. It's been dry for an hour and a half now, but it was raining quite a lot through the night. We have no reports yet on the road conditions, so I'm gonna jump on the big red beast and uh, go and scope whether the road is open, or at least find out from the horse's mouth and the guys clearing it when it might be open. Everyone else is uh, just heading over to breakfast and hopefully <laughs> we're gonna be back on the road. Stay tuned. Vanessa, what are you doing? I'm drinking coffee. I got lured in, so I am going to go and scope the road. But we just got a mini update from one of the road people that it's not clear yet and it's still raining up there. So I might as well have a coffee. Everyone's in here and they're not in bike kit, so I've got time. And I'll ride faster with coffee. <laughs> I'm uh, walking down the road. The lovely road closed guy has let me pass because I promised not to climb under a truck because that would be pretty silly and I don't really want to die anyway so it was a pretty easy promise to make. But down here ahead there's a truck and the excavators and it's something like 20 tonnes worth of mountainside across the road and he said I can go have a look. So we're going to have a look. Woo! I'm nearly at the landslide and already <laughs> I don't know if you can see the size of those trucks. They're really big trucks. Not clear past. Okay. Whoa! Well, can't okay. believe. Yeah, cool. I can't believe the size of that boulder. Okay, I'm walking back up now. Um, I got told I had to go back behind the sign, which I kind of expected, anyway. Uh, we are being told by them on the front line that it's probably not going to be open until lunchtime. So we might need to go make, like, plan F. Uh, oh, this is what makes adventures, though. I mean, that boulder, apparently that digger will be able to push that boulder out of the way. I kind of wish I could stay and watch, but they've told me I have to go back. Party poopers. So I'm gonna go back and report back to you, not just our motorbike group, but pretty much the whole village is waiting for me to go back with news. <laughs> ah. That is exactly what we have been doing. We have been dancing in the rain for like two days. Okay, you probably figured it out way before me, but I worked out what the sign says. It says wipe your hooves. So if you're a horse, you gotta wipe them before you go in. Anyway, time for coffee. hours of is it raining is it sunny is it raining is it sunny is it sunny is it raining uh we are getting close to the halfway point obviously we're doing a diverted route back round over arthur's pass over the southern alps to get to the other side of new zealand to then get south and try and get back on track uh, the weather is continuing to uh, play games with us but on the other side of the island it's like 32 degrees right now so once we get there oh it's gonna be good and, and we'll have loads of stories because we've been on a mighty adventure. Time to get in and look how the all the stories. What's it say? W A something U Hobbs. Maybe that means something in Kiwi land. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning to dance in the rain. Okay, you probably figured it out way before me, but I worked out what the sign says. It says wipe your hooves. So if you're a horse, you gotta wipe them before you go in. Anyway, time for coffee.
quite windy, but we've stopped to take our waterproofs off because where we're going is looking beautiful and it's getting warm. The plan is working. nearly at meth Evan, which is where we are staying tonight and i thought it was probably a good opportunity to tell you a second thing in new zealand that is well well worth doing and that is the southern alps and arthur's pass now because of the weather incident we have actually just had got the opportunity to do it again going the other way and it made me really realize quite how spectacular the scenery is you've got the mountains the passes the big glacier flat uh, pan at the bottom of the valley just beautiful scenes so if you're in new zealand looking for places to see arthur's pass southern alps good pick tour one right now we're stopped by a very gray river Mission success, we've made it to the sunny side of the island. It is beautiful again. We've escaped the landslides, no one was hurt, and the adventure continues. Freaking amazing. And we've got stories. Hopefully, you enjoyed those stories. Um, and yes, I'm wearing a beanie. I just got bantered for the fact that I'm wearing a beanie and it's really hot. I argue that it's never too hot for a beanie. You just need less on the body so you can have the hot on the head, right? Although I am still wearing full kit, so I'm not sure I'm talking any sense. Been a long day, okay?